speak to you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing on in the sermon theme, the summer sermon series, Everyday Disciple, Being Like Jesus in Everyday Life. So far, we've talked about what the life of discipleship looks like. You know, it's a life that's focused on others more so than ourselves. We've said that it's a life that is changed and committed. It's a heart and a will surrendered, a new direction and worldview with Christ's precepts and his character for living as our day-to-day -day example. Discipleship, we said, requires relationship. After all, we are called to call others. And in order to be effective in both making disciples and being disciples, we must make the time to pray and study the word of God and apply the word to our daily lives. And last week, if you recall, we focused on hospitality because after all, the call to follow Jesus includes this act of service and love. When Jesus says to come follow me, to come follow my way of life, it includes opening up our homes, our lives, and our hearts to others beyond our immediate and inner circle. Hospitality is a posture of living. And this week, um, I want us to turn our focus to technology and social media. Yes, friends, technology is definitely a part of discipleship. We use technology and social media as ways to witness to our faith. The ways in which we use technology can either help people learn about Jesus, or sadly, they can alienate them from Jesus. But it's all about how we use them. The advancements of modern technology have been truly amazing and beneficial. I mean, think about it. When the pandemic first began and lockdowns went into effect, it was very unsettling and scary because all of a sudden we could no longer see our family and friends face to face. We had to rely on phone calls or, or standing outside their homes and waving um, from the outside, right? Not being able to physically be in church sh shifted and changed how we worship. Right. Denominations across the board realized or were forced to remember that, you know, church is more than just the building. Church is the people. And through technology, we had the benefit of Zoom, like how we're gathered this morning for worship and our, and our meeting. We had the benefit of this wonderful platform to stay connected and come together for both prayer and worship and study. So platforms like Zoom and social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, they just name a few, they all became even more ingrained, even more a part of our daily lives as ways to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? To offer encouragement during these difficult times. They became a beacon of light in the darkness of the pandemic. I wanna do a little interaction with you all this morning and we're gonna do a, a little Zoom poll. I'm gonna share a, a poll with you in just a moment. So you should see three questions pop up on your screens and it's okay if it's more than one person on a device, anyone can answer these questions. It's a little social media poll and it's three questions I want you to answer yes or no to. Uh, the first question is, do you think the world is better because of social media, yes or no? Do you think social media is going away anytime soon? Yes or no? Or do you think social media, or do you use social media rather to interact with others or obtain information? So just take a few moments to answer those questions as they come up. Let's see, we've got about 65 folks on Zoom. Wait to see if we get at least 
Can you give it just another few seconds as people answer the questions? Again, the first question is, do you think the world is better because of social media? Do you think social media is going away anytime soon? And do you use social media as a way to interact with others and or obtain information? Just a few more seconds. All right, we're gonna close it out. We've got 70% of folks that have responded. Recording in progress. So let's see. For the first question, 60% said yes, that you think the world is a better place because of social media. For the second question, 90% uh, of you said that no, you don't think social media is going away anytime soon. And for the third question, 80% of you said that you use social media to interact with others to um, also obtain information. Okay, so a lot of you do agree that social media is here to stay and a lot of you do use it. So that's good news. Thank you for participating in my little experiment. Technology, as we know, is always advancing. Right? There's always gonna be something new, some new gadget, some new car. I mean, look, we have electronic cars, we have smartphones. I mean, we don't even call these things cell phones anymore, they're smartphones. We have lots of new things that help make life easier. And social media is always gonna play a part in those new developments. With our phones and tablets, there's an app for something for everything, right? We can bank on our phones, we can text, we can shop, right? There are even different apps for the Bible. And that's really helpful in ensuring that we spend the time that we need in reading God's word. Because don't forget, we said that is part of discipleship. And the best part about some of these Bible apps is that they have a variety of Bible study plans that you can choose from, from with an assortment of themes and subjects, all geared to help make reading scripture uh, maybe more enjoyable for those who might struggle um, and want to develop a routine, and maybe even more accessible for those who feel intimidated with picking up uh, a physical book of scripture. And I love the way that we use technology here at St. Paul's. We use technology and social media to spread the good news from our digital newsletter that goes out every week, uh, from our Facebook and Instagram pages that we use to share scripture or video clips from worship. We're live streaming. Uh, we usually live stream on Facebook and YouTube. And this morning we're doing it from YouTube. Uh, our services and other events, and so much more. All of these things are helping us to keep everyone connected, keep our community connected and, and, and involved, and provide a variety of ways to share the good news of God's love. So there's a wonderful amount of, of great pros to the technology and social media as it relates to how we share information in the world and to growing the kingdom of God here on earth. But as with all things in life, we do have to pause and examine, always examine our behavior and habits to ensure that they're in alignment with God's commands. And that includes how we use technology, especially social media, to practice discipleship. In Matthew's Gospel in chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, Jesus is asked by one of the Pharisees who happens to be uh, a lawyer. And he asked the question in a way to test Jesus. And he says, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I just want to focus on that second commandment that Jesus talked about, how we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Our success and our failure in regard to this particular commandment to love our neighbor as we love ourselves is no more evident than in our actions and attitudes on social media. We should always be asking ourselves what kind of content 
are we posting or sharing? Is this content accurate or is it questionable? Are we sharing false stories? Is what we're sharing loving or harmful? Is it informative or destructive? And then also we should be asking is the content that we're consuming, right? Because we, we consume as much as we create or sometimes we spend more time consuming, reading it than we do creating content. Is what we're consuming, what we're reading, we're scrolling through, is it accurate? Is it encouraging? Is it positive and uplifting? Because friends, we become the stories that we watch. We become the things that we read. We are always gonna be influenced by what's happening around us and social media is no exception. We're influenced by what we see and read um, and watch on our social media platforms. I came across an article online this week that talked about the commandments, the 10 commandments in relationship to social media. And the author singled out the ninth commandment in particular. And the ninth commandment, as you recall, says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, simply meaning don't tell lies on other people. And he argued that this commandment is not only about what we say, but it also applies to what we read and listen to. So are the things that we read online accurate and trustworthy? Or are we spending time reading rumors and innuendos? Do the sites we visit or the accounts that we follow demonstrate love and respect for others? Or do they tear down and humiliate? Because loving our neighbor as we love our friends, as ourselves rather, or maybe as Jesus might say in this 21st century, loving your social network or your followers as you love yourself means that we have to have accountability for what we post and for what we read online. The two do go hand in hand. It's not an either or, it's both. In the letter from James, he writes that what comes out of our mouth has power, right? So there's power in the tongue. It can either kill or destroy. With our words, we can bless our God, our Father, our Creator. And at the same time, we can also curse our fellow siblings, our sisters and brothers, those also who are made in the image of God. But the same a principle applies to our hands. So it's not only what we say, what comes out of our mouth, but it's how do we use our hands? Do we use our hands to type words of praise to God, to share scriptures that uh, praise God, and then turn around and use these same hands to share a meme or a screenshot that ridicules or curses our sister and brother? It's not only what we say, but it's also how are we using our hands and what we're communicating and sharing with others, right? As I said earlier, technology is wonderful and has tremendous benefits. We're able to gather info about what's happening in the world just by tapping our smartphones or clicking on our computers, right? We can take pictures and create videos of the best parts of humanity, but sadly we can do the same for the worst parts of humanity. I remember a few years ago, and I hope it's still not a trend, but it seemed like every time I went on Facebook, there was a video of black teens fighting. I mean, just outright brawls in the street, in fast food joints, just everywhere fighting, and no one was intervening, or rarely would an adult come in and, and stop what was happening. But it seemed like everyone had a cell phone and was recording, and you could hear them egging them on and cheering them on. and I started to think, what's the point of sharing this content? Is it that we want to create a, a different narrative for our, for our people? Or are we finding this entertaining? What's the message being relayed? What's, what's positive about this? Because clearly the gospel of Jesus isn't being reflected. The love of neighbor is absent in this. So what is the point, right? We have to be mindful of what we're posting and what we're sharing and even what we're spending time consuming. The same reference of what James says applies, right? Are we sharing videos that are empowering or violent and tearing each other down? Or are we spending our time being entertained by them? Friends, there isn't 
any aspect, not one single aspect of our lives that isn't impacted by our call to be disciples of Christ. The way we live our faith is reflected in everything we do, including our use of technology and our social media platforms. If we are called to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, then what we do and say and what we share and post matters just as much. Because the underlying assumption of social media is that the world is watching. The world is watching, right? Any little thing can go viral. That means millions of people can come across what we post and share and be affected by it, either in a positive or a negative way. So if the world is watching, that means as disciples, the world is watching what we do. The world is watching how we behave, how we treat one another, how we love one another. So we have these wonderful tools that are available to our use for great and wonderful things, and we shouldn't be afraid to use them or learn how to use them. But as we call others to Christ, we have to be mindful of how we use them. We have to be mindful of our motivation in using them and understand that our neighbors, those who we seek to make disciples, are going to be affected by how we use them. So as we use this gift of technology and social media in advancing the kingdom of God, let us always make sure that we are uplifting and blessing and educating and loving in the content that we share and that we too in return are being uplifted and blessed and nurtured in the content that we consume. Amen.